Okay, so here's inside the Disconnect RS. A PV wire is coming into this conduit. Um, <clears throat> so in the bottom here, there's the four PV inputs, the low voltage and the high voltage, and then the output. Uh, PV1 is the higher current, lower voltage. PV2 is the higher voltage. Um, the power cables right here are coming in through the same bushing, which may be a problem. Okay. And then the uh, the actual uh, RS rabbit shutdown initiator is just shorted. Um, I've yet to install the switch outside. So um, this cable right here is uh, disconnected and that's the cable that will eventually connect the um, the uh, switch once it's fully installed. The mod bus cables or Zan bus cables are just coming in through the outside um, through the disconnect and then, or into the interconnect there. And then yeah, I mean nothing nothing up here was touched clearly so. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing that was added was a ground bus in the back. Um, so the black wire with green tape is a earth ground connection. And then this ground goes to um, the uh, power distribution panel ground and then a separate ground goes to the chassis ground back here um, so it's pretty straightforward again the, there's there's two ferrite cores that are attached to the input lines of the PV inside uh, the um, disconnect there or the combiner box so that all that combiner box is going to be cleaned up once this is mounted on the wall. Um, but for this purpose, it's basically how I'm able to test this system. So I guess one thing I could do is temporarily rewire this power line uh, and see if there's some noise on that that's coupling. Um, uh, but there's really not um, an easy way to get it through this wall without drilling. So this knockout does not line up with this knockout. Um, okay. okay, so right now I have um, the MPPT-100. Um, not tracking, so I have it at a fixed uh, 285 volts. So let's go ahead and make it tracking. Okay, so right now it's happily tracking at 309, 305 volts and then it just switched to 192. Okay, so that will be our monitor. <clears throat> and then um, one of the requests was, uh, let's go ahead and shut the 60 off. Okay, so we will shut both circuits off. All right, so this should say low light. All right, and now um, we can disconnect the power to the 60. Okay, so this should turn the power off to that. Okay, so now <clears> the <throat> question was, is does this track well Okay, with one of the charge controllers off? 
So it's at 223 right now. Which is not 192, but just sort of watch this for a bit. So 227 volts. So that's not peak power, but it's not sitting at 192 volts. So I think, you know, one way to sort of get this I'm going to kill the power to this circuit first and then that way it sort of finds VOC. Okay, so circuit's disconnected, it's discharging Kigos. No power. Okay, and then we'll turn it back on. Okay, so 382 volt VOC. Okay, so yeah, there's max power, quite a bit higher than what it was at before. Um, and so let's see if it drops out to 192 volts. Yep, yeah, so it just jumped down for some reason. And these panels are in perfect sun, there's no shading or anything like that. So it's sitting at 234 volts. So this is new for sure. And there it goes. Okay, so it just dropped to. 192 and now back to VOC. So peak power is somewhere around 300 volts. Tracking well, and then drop down again, and back out. Okay, so with one charge controller off, it's still, um, again, this one's off, it's still malfunctioning. Power curve is actually pretty flat between 280 and 290, so yeah, we get good power just keeping keeping it at a fixed voltage right now. Yep, that's all. Okay, so this is a continuation of um, outside of the uh, disconnect RS. Okay, so the PV wires come in. Um, these two go up. Uh, to the uh, MPPT-60. Um, I've got you know, power supply cables up here. Looks like this could be cleaned up a little bit in terms of positive and negative connection. So I guess there could be some noise um, since this positive and negative are going through the same you know, conduit area here as the PV wires. So this is the 600 wires. Um, that go to, check everything off here, to the MPPT-60. So this is how I have it wired up. Battery cables are all up here. 
Um, this is all the AC wiring bundle, and then this is the PV wire. I have it, you know, sort of separated. And then there's the ferrite core. Um, you know, this doesn't. It's not. This doesn't really serve its purpose. This plastic piece when the MPPT 100 is is on this side, um, on the left side of the unit, but sort of the best I could do. I guess I could try, <clears throat> you know, sort of running this cable in conduit inside here. Maybe that would, and then maybe, <clears throat> you know, this battery connection is uh, adding noise right in here. So, not sure what to do. Okay, so the whole unit is is on a frame right now that's going to be mounted to the wall, but right now it's just freestanding. Um, and then the disconnect <coughs> here. Uh, there's the two ferrite cores in, in here, so that should, you know, sort of clean up the PV signal coming into Disconnect RS. And then this is the EG4 battery bank. Um, so battery monitors up here. This is a Victron, uh, just fuse box. The battery shunt is back there. And then these are the, the uh, Life Power 4s, which I know you guys are working on with Signature Solar to kind of get actual communication with. So here's the main negative up here. And then the main positive is down here. Positive goes through fuses here. This is just a battery uh, network cable if I want to monitor the battery. And then everything for the battery monitor, cables and whatnot. <clears throat> okay, so that's the entire system so far. This wiring will go in conduit eventually when the unit gets wall mounted. Um, so yeah, just trying to diagnose this this issue with the charge controller. Uh, not functioning. Currently it's isoleated to this 100 MPPT 60 or 600, this device.